February 27, 2007, will forever be etched in the depths of my heart and in my mind. You see, that day, the events that unfolded taught me more than any textbook, any college professor, or any mentor. I came to understand that the mind is this amazing thing, and that it has the potential to create our own reality, to shape our own destiny, and to exceed man's expectancy. I understood that we are today the result of yesterday's decisions, and that tomorrow we will become whatsoever we diligently think about today. It was a Tuesday afternoon, and I came home to my three foster kids, my 15-year-old son, and my wife. There was something different about her that day. You see, she approached me very emphatically, and I noticed that she had an extra sparkle in her eyes. She was lit up like a Christmas tree. She embraced me and looked at me square in the eye, and she said to me, today is the day. Today is the day. I didn't pay much attention. I didn't ask her what she meant. I was more concerned about her physical well-being. You see, that day, she had had a blood transfusion, and she was wearing a morphine patch. She had been suffering for 15 years. Hodgkin's lymphoma had slowly but surely spread throughout her body. It debilitated her bones and her muscles, yet never touched her spirit or her mind. Her body denoted infirmity, but her spirit spoke differently. She saw cancer as an opportunity to bring hope to the hopeless and to encourage the discouraged. We carried on with our day. We had dinner with the kids. We sat around, we talked, we joked. We had a great time, but I noticed something different. It was as if she would never see them again, or for at least an extended time. We talked, we put the kids to bed, we said goodnight. Then we went into our bedroom. And I said to her, you know what, it's getting late. You really need to come to bed. You need to rest because it's been a long day. You still got morphine in your system. You need to rest. She said, you don't understand. I can't. I need to get ready because today is the day. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, you would never understand. You would never understand. She says, I just, I don't have enough time. I need to get ready. So I remember that she went in the bathroom and she did pedicure, manicure, facial. She fixed her hair and took out and selected specific clothes and put them in the closet where I could see them. After about 45 minutes, it must have been 11 p.m., she came back out into the bedroom. She sat on the edge of the bed and she called me over. She said, I need to talk to you. She grabbed my hands firmly, but with a very gentle and sweet spirit, she said to me, today is a day. Today is a day I go home. Today is a day I meet my creator. Today is a day when I get my healing and my affliction ends. Confused, fearful, nervous, I interrupted our conversation. I said, it's time to go to bed now. I thought to myself, she's delirious, right? We went to bed about 11.45, held hands, prayed, and I looked at her and I said, good night, and we'll talk about this tomorrow. The next day, bright and early at 5.30, my alarm clock went off. I got up right out of bed. I'm a morning guy. I turned around and I saw her, and there she was holding onto her pillow with a great big smile, still asleep the way I had always pictured her. I went over to her side of the bed. I put my hand on her shoulder, and I whispered in her ear, good morning, beautiful. Good morning, beautiful. But she never replied, and she never would. She knew what she was talking about. You see, she lived by this legacy statement or a motto. Her motto was, live life in such a way that when you die, the preacher doesn't have to lie about you. Yeah. <laughs> you see, despite her circumstances, 
She saw every part of the process as an opportunity and not as a curse. And it was her positive attitude despite the affliction that she, that she faced that led me to the following question. What causes certain people to break through the borders of affliction and succeed and do it with a smile? What causes certain people to succeed while others don't? What is the difference between those who do and those who don't? And the answer was very plain and simple. They possess a different mindset. They have a mindset that overcomes. They have the tenacity to break through the borders of affliction with a smile. Their lives have not been molded and shaped by people, but by their own words. You see, the doctor gave the diagnosis, but she elaborated her own prognosis. That is the mind of someone who overcomes. They understand that words are like seeds that have the potential to grow and bear fruit of its same kind. You see, our minds are shaped by our past, by past experiences, specifically by those words that were spoken over our lives. And they've been planted in our minds. She guarded herself very well and didn't let any word in her mind because she understood the principle of those words being like seeds. That when they're watered, they grow and they can take over. They either empower you or they debilitate you. They either promote you or they demote you. They either edify or they destroy. They either become your greatest ally or your worst nemesis. You see, I believe that words have creative power. Words create an image in our mind. I call it visualization. And I believe that whatever you visualize will materialize in due season. Whatsoever you think about consistently. You see, people who overcome obstacles and affliction with a smile are people that surround themselves with people of the same kind. Because they understand the principle that you become the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. They understand that words are like the rudder on a ship that directs it to its port of call. They understand that they will not rise above their own self-image and that self-image is made by self and not by people. What you see in the mirror is what you have created. Or whatever you see in the mirror is what you have allowed other people to create. She didn't allow other people to create her own image. She created her very own thoughts are powerful. You see, our thoughts and our heart, our spirit, are interconnected, and they become words. And our words have this power to produce emotions, feelings. And our feelings eventually guide us, and they become decisions. And those decisions become actions. And those actions repeated over time become our habits, and our habits form our character, and our character leads us to our final destination in life, whatever it is, whether good or bad, to our final destination. I remember, I remember her telling me that evening as she held my hands. She said to me, I release you. I release you today. I've been praying that God will bring a woman into your life that will bless you as you have blessed me. For 15 years, you have cared for me. You have carried me. You've been there next to me. And guess what? She said, God already has someone for you. Now, that really freaked me out. <laughs> I'll be honest. I release you, she said. So she planted words of hope in me. She planted words of expectancy. I release you. Months went by. I was still going through the grieving process. And my son David says to me, hey, dad, you're becoming a grumpy old man. You need to find yourself a woman. <laughs> so then I remembered her words. I release you. So there I was standing at the church at the door. 
and the church members were leaving, and I was shaking hands, and I was saying, you know, have a blessed Sunday. And one of the ushers came over to me, and she said, a pastor, there is a, uh, a visitor who you have not met. She usually goes out the side door because she's a little shy, and I wanted you to meet her. I said, great, who is this person? She says, that lady right over there. And when I saw her coming, it only took me five seconds, and I said, that's my wife. That's my wife. So I did what every pastor does. I shook her hand, and I said, welcome to our church. But then I did what no other pastor does. I said, do you have a husband? <laughs> she said, no, I'm single. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and the rest, of course, is history. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> I want to end my talk with the words of an author, a famous author, who said, we are not the product of our circumstances. We are only the product of our decisions. Amen. So this is my word to you. Thank you, sister. This is my word to you. Decide to live. And if you live, live intentionally so that the preacher doesn't have to lie about you. Thank you for listening.